What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this afternoon. So what we're going to be covering in this update video is yes, we are going to be taking a look at that Ortex short interest and utilization data, but we're going to be taking a look at it from a little bit of a different lens today. So if you guys have been following along with any of my updates over the last couple of weeks, you know I've been very interested in that January expiration date in terms of the options chain. It is setting up very strangely right now with the amount of contracts that are already in the money, with the amount of contracts that are out of the money, and it does set up for a possible gamma squeeze. But we've already covered that, and you guys kind of already know that already if you have been paying close attention. But... With a screenshot that has been shared from Unusual Whales, with a couple of trades that have been happening on AMC recently, somebody somewhere is selling a very, very high dollar amount of deep in the money calls. There is a very interesting implication of this, and it has to do with hiding short interest. So when we're thinking about what's going on with Ortex and how the numbers have seemingly been messed with over the last week, there is an explanation for this. And this is something that I really want a lot of people to understand because when you think about how this process works of them hiding this short interest and how they are going to unwind the trade, there is one thing that has to happen every time and it inputs buying volume back into AMC. And that is why potentially around the times of these quarterly options expiration periods that we see AMC start to run up. So we're going to go into this situation in depth. So I hope you guys are ready for some pretty cool information. We also have to talk about Ken Griffin buying the synthetic constitution. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So AMC closed the day on Friday at $40.87. Again, it was above that max pain price of $40, but with the action on the option chain and what was expiring uh, around that $40 strike last week, it didn't really make a whole lot of a difference if we were going to finish at 41 between 39 because the market makers were going to be on the hook for relatively the same amount anyway. But we did go up about half a percent in the after hours. So let's see if we can get off to a strong start on Monday. We could potentially see some volatility next week with the Fed chair nomination. But again, everybody is really excited about Powell because we kind of already know uh, what Powell's policy decisions are going to be. And I believe the other nominee who a lot of people are thinking could potentially get nominated to be the Fed chair is just overly bullish on the market. So we could see some volatility, but again, we are just going to have to wait and see. So when we come over to Ortex right here, let me just refresh this real quick. We see utilization 75.76%. Now, again, we're going to have to wait until the exchange reported short interest comes out again to see if these utilization numbers and estimated short interest numbers are going to change. But we've seen a steep decline recently as we're heading into the end of the year in some of these numbers, but we haven't seen it necessarily reflected in the price action. We're seeing the short interest fall a little bit over the last week from that 17% range all the way into that 15.57% range. But we're going to go over how this is possible possible in a little bit. But again, when we come over to this article right here, this is just kind of comical. Citadel CEO Kenneth Griffin outbid a group of crypto investors for a copy of US Constitution. Now, it's not the exact comp uh, constitution. So he bought a synthetic quote unquote constitution. So hopefully it doesn't fail to deliver, Kenny, and you actually get your constitution and we will just have to keep dealing with these FTDs. But he's planning on lending this constitution to Crystal Bridges Museum in Arkansas. So this is just kind of a weird, fun, interesting development that we've seen yesterday play out. Uh, the jokes are honestly too easy. But let's get uh, into some of the more serious things that we need to talk about. So this on Stonko Tracker is what we've been looking at and finding very interesting over the last couple of weeks. We see 162,000 contracts already in the money for January. Now, when you think about options, there's always going to be a selling party and a buying party. So the 162,000 contracts here are owned and net shorted by somebody at the current time. Now, we also have 243,000 contracts that are out of the money. And we also see a decent amount of open interest on the puts. Now, when we come over to the actual options chain for AMC to look and see where these contracts are concentrated, they're deep in the money. So what we've gone over in the past is that a lot of these contracts could be exercised due to the amount um, that you would 
basically need to put up to pay in order to exercise these contracts. So this $8 strike would cost you $800 to get those 100 shares per contract. Now, when we look over here, we're not seeing a whole lot of volume on this option chain on these deep in the money contracts. We see some on the out of the money contracts, and then you see this giant block right here, 5,300 in volume, 10,000 in volume, 5,000 in volume, concentrated between these seven and nine strikes. Now, when we think about what's going on here and we come over to this unusual whale screenshot, they have listed these as cells. So meaning that somebody is selling deep in the money calls. Now, typically, this would be a very, very bearish bet. And what essentially happens when you're selling calls is that you need the share price to be under the strike price that you're selling it at, so seven, eight, and nine, by the time of expiration. So if you're just looking at this at face value, you would think, well, somebody out there is making a wild bet that AMC is going to be below that seven through nine range by the end of January. But there's a lot more to this that I really want to get into. So when we move on to this Google document that I've created, again, this is an actual SEC filing. I've just copied and pasted it onto this Google doc and highlighted the most important parts because on the SEC's website, you cannot do that. So when we're looking at some of the information here directly from the SEC, when they're talking about short interest, short interest reporting, failures to deliver and kicking the can down the road, this section is very, very interesting. A buy right trade is a simultaneous sale of calls in the purchase of the equivalent amount of shares in the underlying stock. Buy right trades associated uh, with the activity at issue typically employ deep in the money calls. Hmm, that's exactly what we've seen. And they are selling these calls and they also could be buying the equivalent amount of shares. A married put is the simultaneous purchase of a put and a purchase of the equivalent amount of shares in the underlying stock. When, the associ uh, when associated with the activity at issue, the married puts typically employ deep in the money puts. Now, I have also heard some theories and seen uh, the research on how this is actually done with deep out of the money puts as well. And when we come over to AMC's option chain and take a look at the puts, well, we don't see any crazy action on the deep in the money put side, but look at the deep out of the money puts. The furthest strike, the 50 cent strike on AMC has 24,000 of open interest, meaning that 24,000 contracts are being held at the current time at that 50 cent strike. So there is something very strange going on with the option chain right now. The main features of flex options compared to standard traded options are the abilities to specify the strike price and the expiration date. Options are priced in the marketplace so that the price of the underlying security is the same as the quote unquote synthetic price of its options. This relationship between the price of the security and its options is known as the put call parity. For example, a synthetic long position which uh, consists of a long call and a short put in the same strike and expiration date is typically the equivalent of a 100 share long position in an equity security, when the synthetic position is priced correctly with respect to the actual shares, no potential profit opportunities exist in the market. In other words, being long the synthetic position and being short the actual shares normally results in a riskless fully hedged and profitless position. This position is commonly known in the industry as a reversal. So. When we're looking at this section right here, when we think about that buy right trade, when we go into detail of this really, really long document, it's also used to kick the can down the road in terms of these failure to delivers because when you sell those deep in, in the money calls and buy the appropriate amount of shares, you're meeting your broker's uh, closeout requirement. That's essentially what you're doing. So you are appearing to have closed out your short position when you actually haven't. Now, the SEC actually outlines an example of this. And when we come down below, let me see if we can get to this actual example. So Trader A might, may enter into a buy right transaction consisting of selling deep in the money calls and buying shares of stock against the call side. By doing so, Trader A appears to have purchased shares to meet the broker dealer's closeout obligation for the fail to deliver that resulted from the reverse conversion. In practice, however, the circumstances, suge uh, circumstances suggest that Trader A has no intention of delivering shares and is instead reestablishing establishing or extending a fail position. Now, we haven't really seen a significant increase in the actual nominal amount of AMC's failure to deliver positions, but we're seeing these really weird moves in the Ortex data, and we're also seeing these very, very strange moves in the option chain. So is it possible that somebody out there is making a wildly bearish bet on AMC right now that it's going to finish below that $7 to $9 range? before or on that January expiration date. Yeah, it's possible, but that is a really significant, essentially YOLO bet that AMC is going to tank. I don't see 
that happening. And I see these types of situations where they're trying to mess around with the option chain, spoof short interest as being much more likely as to what is exactly going on. So now how does this affect us going into January? Well, remember what I said earlier in the video, how there's going to be that one thing that these institutions, whoever is engaging in these transactions, what they have to do in order to make these transactions work, they need to buy shares. So when these transactions, such as one of those reversal trades or those reverse conversions come into effect, what does that result in? Well, there's a lot of outstanding contracts that need to be hedged for or even rolled over. That could be one of the explanations as to why we saw AMC start to run up significantly significantly before that September monthly options expiration date because it was also a quarterly options expiration date and we were seeing a lot of unusual activity on the options chain then as well. Now, when we think about January, the option chain is setting up even bigger for January. So it's possible that we are going to see even more hedging, more buying volume put into the actual stock just based off of all of the weird and random and intricate derivatives trading that we see occurring on AMC on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is really going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend and I'll see you guys in the next one.